trick or treat, trick or treat. Candy is dandy, the image of his feet. Okay, Martha, how about this? Spirits in torment, do they really come back to the scenes of their tragedies, bound there forever, even in death? Mm -hmm. Martha? Martha stared out at the deepening twilight, the rolling hillside so unfamiliar, the trees nearly stripped by October winds. In spite of the station wagon's stuffy interior, she shivered. Martha? Dad. Do we have to talk about that now? Well, why not? It's a great topic for my new article. Halloween's got me inspired. Mm. Come on, Martha. Are you still upset with me? I just can't believe you've done this. Look, we already talked about it. You knew Sally and I wanted to get married and have all of us together. I couldn't live in the house where Sally lived with her ex-husband. And Sally and Connor couldn't compete with all your mother's memories at home. We had to get a place of our own. But Sally got the house. Hey. You and I agreed a long time ago to get out of the city. She chose it. Well, I didn't have time to go house hunting. And when Sally called about this place, it sounded just right. A study where I can write, a studio where Sally can paint, and good big rooms for you and Connor. You really don't like Sally, do you? No, Dad, it's not that. I like her, honest. Connor, then. Connor's weird. Look, Dad... You always wanted a big brother. He's only a year older than me. And think how much harder this will be for him, being a senior and having to transfer in mid-year. Nothing bothers Connor. You've only met him a couple of times. He's a philosopher. You just have to scratch below the surface and try to understand him. I don't want to understand him. He hardly ever talks, and when he does, it's more like he's talking to himself. He's so aloof and casual about everything. I think he fascinates you, and you won't admit it. Dad, get <laughs> serious. That's the driveway into the house, I think. See that break in the trees? Sally said the first clearing after the turn back there. I don't know. It's so dark out there. Yeah. It's as if they haven't cleared the road for years. Mm. We're in the middle of nowhere. Look, Martha. There it is. Our new home. Trick or Treat by Richie Tankersley Cusick. The house looked strangely ghost-like, rising up through pale wisps of fog, its dark stone walls and chimneys interwoven with bare, twisted trees. Silhouetted in the twilight, its gables crawled with dead ivy. Its tattered awnings drooped like eyelids. Someone had propped a scarecrow against the porch, and its hideous face flickered in the glow of a jack-o'-lantern. Martha took a deep breath and let her eyes wander over the blur of house and shadows. As she glanced towards the woods, her hands, gripping the dashboard of the car, grew suddenly cold. What a perfect place for someone to hide. For someone to watch. And we'd never even know. Well, Martha, isn't it terrific? Hi! Hey. So, what do you think? Oh. <laughs> it's pretty wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. If you like horror movies. So, don't you think so, Martha? Yeah, Sally, it's great. Martha gazed at the cracked door, its paint peeling off, its panes of stained glass broken. Some of the boards on the porch were rotted away completely. Well, of course it still needs work. Mm. <laughs> but what potential! I guess so. Hi. Oh, hi. Martha had forgotten all about Connor. As he stepped onto the porch, the light from the hallway caught his face, and she felt herself drawn to him, just as she had been before. There was something about him, something Martha couldn't quite pinpoint. The square jaw and the way his mouth was always set. The corners always lifted slightly in a secret sort of amusement. The deep-set eyes, so cool and steady and blue beneath his low brows. He was wearing jeans and a bulky sweater, 
but he still looked tall and slender, his broad shoulders hunched against the chilly night air. My stepbrother. He's my stepbrother now. You remember Connor, don't you, Martha? Of course she does. Oh, listen to me. <laughs> of course you remember him. <laughs> my very own little sister. What a lucky guy. Uh, Connor, why don't you show Martha her room? Oh, he, well, he picked out the one he thought you'd like, but of course it is sure another it'll one. Be fine. Connor led the way up the warped, creaky stairs. Martha followed him, trying to pull away from the deep shadows, the close walls, the musty smells. Show me some lights. We should still on here somewhere. Oh. Uh, half these lights don't work. One of the few minor inconveniences we'll have to get used to. What are the others? How does one bathroom strike you? You've got to be kidding. <laughs> I wish I were. It's at the end of the servants' hall. You see, there's a back staircase there, too. You can take it all the way to the cellar or up to the attic. There. Is this room mine? Yeah. Thought you'd want privacy. It's away from everyone else's. Mom bought this bed down from the attic. You could use it until... What's wrong? Martha stood frozen on the threshold of the door, staring into the room. Shadows skittered across the faded flower pattern on the torn wallpaper. A bare window seat stretched beneath a curtainless window, and the closet door stood slightly ajar. It's so cold. Ah, oh, once you get your things in here, it won't seem so bad. No. Can't you feel it? The cold... Something terrible happened in this room. Connor! Martha! Come on, dinner! It, it's just drafts. All old houses have them. Yes. So, that's the essence of it. Oh. <laughs> Martha? You haven't heard a word we've said. Oh, sorry. Yeah, well, at least this house gives me the inspiration I need for my new article. Mm -hmm. The doomed and the restless oh. dead. Oh, really? <laughs> I wonder if the realtor guaranteed ghosts with this place. Mm, could be. There's supposed to be a cemetery somewhere on the property. A cemetery? Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, I think you'll really like the school here, Martha. When you go on Monday, you'll see a Mr... Oh. What's his name? Uh. Oh, well, anyway, you could kind of stick with Connor. He already knows his way around. Mm -hmm. I'll be okay by myself. No, look, Martha, Sally's gone to a lot of trouble, you I'm, know. Uh, you better stick close to me, Martha. You look about 12. If I'm not there to vouch for you, they might send you over to the elementary school. Ha, <sighs> ha. It was true. Martha, with her wide gray eyes and bouncy blonde hair, had always looked young for her age. Wholesome, that's what her mom had always called her. Martha had a face that couldn't hide her true feelings, no matter how hard she tried. Thanks, Sally. Good dinner. May I be excused? But you hardly ate a thing. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, sure, Martha. Go and ha have a look around. Watch those steps now. Some of them aren't too secure. Even with so many lights on, the house was still dark. Silent walls rose around Martha. High ceilings and hidden corners swarmed with shadows. She hated it. She would never liked scary things, never understood her father's macabre sense of humor and his fascination with the unknown. And she hated herself. It was horrible being 16 and such a baby. Martha's gaze settled on the heavy draperies at the far end of the hall. Wait a minute. Am I going crazy or did those velvet curtains move just now? Just a little rise and fall. Like someone might be hiding there. Behind the folds of velvet. Martha? <gasps> Connor! Sorry, I thought you heard me. Where'd you come from? Just from the kitchen? Where'd you think? Do you want to see the rest of the house? Okay, I'll follow you. As they wound their way through the house, it seemed to grow more and more overwhelming and frightening. So many rooms, so many nooks and niches and closets. It was all confusing. Martha couldn't believe how much her safe, happy world had changed since the death of her mother. And now... Dad and Sally were so wrapped up in each other and this stupid house, they'd never care how unhappy she was. Oh, hi, you two. You made it back. Do you like it, Martha? <sighs> I'll never find my way around this place. <laughs> you have to admit, it has character. Sure, it's terrific. Sally, I think I'll head up to bed. Oh, I'm really tired. <sighs> good night. Okay, good night. Good night, Martha. Forcing a smile, Martha left the kitchen and dragged herself upstairs to her room. The cold was still there, 
seeping from the corners like an invisible fog. <sighs> this room must be on the windy side of the house. That's why the temperature's so much lower here. <sighs> Once I get a good night's sleep, it'll be okay. I just wish I hadn't acted like such an idiot in front of Connor. She shut the door to her room and got into her nightgown, all the while her eyes glancing uneasily at the window, the corners, the closet. Honey, that closet door was open when I first came up here. I know it. Did Connor close it when he was showing me around? No. I'm sure not. Where is everyone anyway? I can't hear a sound. It's like I'm completely cut off from the rest of the house. Oh, come on, Martha. Get up and check the closet yourself. Okay. Oh. Empty. Oh. I don't know what's the matter with me. I'm going to leave this light on. Just tonight. Even if they do laugh at me. Exhaustion settled over Martha like a huge weight. She fell almost at once into a deep and dreamless sleep. Hmm. Dad? Sally? Hmm. Why doesn't anyone answer it? How long have I been asleep, anyway? Stumbling out into the dark hall, she groped her way towards the ringing. Hello? Look outside. Trick or treat. What? Hello? Who is this? It's just a crank call. What's the matter with me? I've had crank calls before. Martha tried to put the call from her mind, but as she walked back into her room, the window was there, waiting for her. A black, gaping hole against the night. Frenzied trees clawing at the glass. As if in a bad dream, Martha crossed to the window seat and forced herself to look out. Hanging there, so close she could have touched it, was a body. Martha knew he was dead from the way he was swinging. A slow, crazy dance in the cold, cold wind. There was a carving knife through his head. And as the moonlight fell across his slashed face, he grinned up at her. Martha? Martha? What's the matter? What is it? Look. Oh, that. It's just the, the scarecrow, you know? The one from the porch? Someone sure went to a lot of trouble for a joke. Where's Dad? They couldn't sleep. Sally told me they were going out for a drive. What happened? Didn't you hear the phone ringing? No, I was... It in... was horrible. The phone call. What they said. Who? I don't know. A man. The voice was deep, but kind of throaty. He told me to look outside, and then he said, trick or treat. Trick or treat? What are you thinking? I'm thinking what a fool that joker is. Not even Halloween yet. You're making fun of me. I'm not. Now, why would I do that? Look, I'll get rid of that scarecrow in the morning. If the phone rings again, let me answer it. It's probably just some kids being cute. It just figures. What does? That something like this would happen in this stupid house. Why did your mother pick it to begin with? Uh, uh, partly because she was trying to please your father. He was pleased in Chicago. You're having a real problem with their happiness, aren't you? Don't you tell me what I feel. Get out! Get out of my room! Sure, out of the room where something terrible happened. You! <laughs> get out! Hey, that's no way to treat your shoes. Just get out! Good night, sis. For a long time, Martha huddled in her room trying to forget the phone call and trying to keep her eyes away from the window. I guess Connor's right. Halloween's coming up, so kids play jokes. Especially on the new people in town. Yeah. She slid back beneath the covers and shut her eyes. But the feeling of dread stayed with her, at the edge of her senses, wrapped up in the cold. It seemed she'd scarcely dozed off before Martha woke again, this time to gray daylight 
and the faraway rumble of thunder. Just great. A day to match the house. Dark and dismal. <sighs> Wait a minute. It's gone. The scarecrow's gone. <sighs> Martha pulled on jeans and a sweatshirt and followed the smell of burnt bacon down to the kitchen. Ah, good morning, Martha. Isn't it a glorious day? It looks really dramatic. Did you sleep well? Okay. Uh, where's Connor? Oh, out back. He's filling the wood box. Would you tell him that breakfast's ready? Sure. A damp wind blew across the back porch. Trees crowded close on all sides, and the tiny yard was choked with weeds and dead leaves. Martha stood there shivering, thinking again how lonely and isolated the place was. Then, Connor stepped out from the woods, his arms stacked with logs. It's nice back in there. You can hear the forest just living around you. Connor, you didn't tell them about last night. No? Why? Did you want me to? No. <laughs> Dad would probably have laughed. He thinks I just imagine things. Yeah, I got that feeling. But I don't. Imagine things, I mean. I know. The moving van arrived at 3 o'clock, and for the rest of the afternoon, Martha was too busy carrying and unpacking boxes to worry about anything else. The house began to take on some semblance of normality. But Martha couldn't make her own room look any more appealing, even with all her old familiar things around. Well, what's the verdict, Martha? Think you'll stay a while? Do I have a choice? Honor, would you mind going out for some picture hooks? We're having a crisis in here. Perhaps you could take Martha with you. Show her the town. No, oh, you want to? Okay, I guess it's better than staying here. <laughs> well, don't be too enthusiastic. On the way to town, Martha could now see the route they'd taken the night before. The dirt road, the dense woods, and the endless sweep of spent fields beneath a leaden sky. She wondered how Sally had found this place at all. What are people like around here? Friendly? I don't know. Nobody's talked to me. Have you been to town a lot? Uh, twice, maybe. But don't get your hopes up. It's not Chicago. They drove into town past neat frame houses, well-tended yards, and quiet sidewalks. From nearly every house, jack-o'-lanterns grinned back at them. Ah, there it is. Our friendly local hardware store. Looks like something out of the past, doesn't it? There was one man in the store, standing at the cash register, and a girl on a ladder at the back. While Connor hunted along the dusty counters for picture hooks, Martha spied an old mirror propped up on a shelf and she leaned in towards its dingy glass. Above her shoulder, she saw a smeared reflection of another face, and she froze. She hadn't heard anybody walk up, but the boy was right behind her, his body rigid, his dark eyes wide, an expression of shock on his handsome face. Uh, sorry, from the back, I thought you were someone else. Uh, have you found what you need? Well, I... I, I guess I sort of shot you, no, staring like that. No, I, I... Picture hooks, Martha, remember? Hooks, sure. Uh, hey, Wynn, find some picture hooks, will you? No problem. I'll go check them out. I haven't seen you around, have I? No, you couldn't have. I mean, I just got here. You just moved here? Yesterday, sort of. <laughs> sort of? I'm Blake Chambers. Martha Stevenson. Nice to meet you. You're the first person I've met here. Great. Then I'll be the official welcome committee. So, whereabouts in town do you live? Well, we're not really in town. It's a big old house sort of out in the country. I don't really know my way around yet, but it's sort not of... Not the old Bedford place. I don't know. I didn't know it had a name. Uh, sure. Everyone knows it. I'd say you had your work cut out for you. Uh, is that your boyfriend? Connor? No, he's not... I know. You're just good friends. No! I mean, our parents just got married. To each other, if you see what I mean. Wow. New family, new town. That's tough. It's okay, I guess. Do you work here? <laughs> not if I can help it. My uncle owns the place. Wynne works here. She's my cousin. I'm just helping out. Look, uh, I've got to go. I'm late already. Nice meeting you. I'll probably see you at school. I hope so. He's not your type. Mind your own business, Connor. Martha shouldered past Connor to the car. They drove home in silence. After dinner that night, Martha excused herself as soon as she could and went outside. 
Shivering in the damp night air, she walked slowly around to the backyard, remembering how Blake had frozen there in the store when she'd mentioned the house, how he'd mistaken her for someone else. Suddenly, she stopped and looked off through the mist towards the woods. There's something moving back there. I can't see it, but it's there, watching. I know it. Sally said there's supposed to be an old cemetery somewhere on the property. Could it be out there in the woods? What's that? The wind? No, it's too sad. Who's there? Is someone there? Oh, God, who are you? Martha stood there, terrified. Around her, the trees shuddered as something shifted deep within their shadows and slipped away. Finally, Martha was able to move. She ran back into the house as the mist curled after her. The next morning, as Connor drove her to school, Martha couldn't get the house out of her mind. She hadn't told anybody about what had happened to her last night. Her dad wouldn't listen anyway, she thought. Besides, she'd just learned that he was planning to leave her stranded in the house, alone with Connor, and with some horrible thing running loose in the woods. You're not taking this very well. I can't believe it. Dad's been here two days, and now his magazine wants him to go away on assignment? And in Hawaii, no less. Well, he's pretty excited about it. Uh, of course he is. Sally goes with him, and the two of them have a fine vacation. Honeymoon. We're the ones who'll get the vacation. From what? <laughs> Mom's cooking. <laughs> well, here we are. Uh, good luck today, Martha. After school, I'll meet you right here in the student car park. Come on. I'll take you to the office. Hey, you look kind of white. You should have eaten something. I'm fine. I don't need you to worry about me. I know. You don't need anybody. Bedford High looked quaint, comfortable, and small, Martha thought. She followed Connor into the brick building, down the hall into a small office where Connor spoke to his secretary, and took off for his class. Martha was led into an even tinier office, where she faced a boyishly handsome man across a cluttered desk. Martha Stevenson? Hi, I'm, I'm Greg Chambers, your new advisor. Mr. Chambers in the halls and in class, but Greg's fine here. Uh, welcome to Bedford High. Thanks. Uh, your stepmother's already been to see me and explain the situation. Uh, it's rough, I know. I come from a broken home myself. So give yourself time and permission. Permission to feel all the things you want to feel. They'll be easier to handle if you do. Now, let me see uh, what your former school sent me. Oh, these notes look very good. Well, uh, I know everything will be new and different for you here. As Mr. Chambers looked over her file, Martha found herself liking this man. He couldn't be that old, she thought to herself, perhaps late 20s. Dark hair and eyes, tall and beautifully tanned. He reminded her of someone. Blake. Hmm? Blake Chambers. You know Blake? No. You just look like him. I met him in the hardware store yesterday. Well, I knew Blake worked fast, but well, hey, don't look like that. I'm, I'm just kidding. He's my cousin. Athlete extraordinaire. Leading scorer on the basketball team. Top eye jumper in the state. Of course, I'm prejudiced, not to mention extremely jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go to school here, too? Where else? I loved it here. Loved the town. Still do. Give it a chance, Martha. We're all here to help you, especially me. Thanks. Now, uh, let's decide where to put you. I hear you're quite the writer. Awards in state competition, yearbook, school paper... Oh, and... they were just little awards. I've got a lot to learn. Great. Then let's start with my creative writing class. Uh, do I have to try out? With your qualifications? Are you kidding? Uh... Hey, don't look so worried. You'll love the class. I'm pretty fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget it. Tell all oh, your friends. Of course. <laughs> Greg was right. The writing class that afternoon was the only thing that Martha did like. Lunchtime had been a torture, all the kids staring and no one asking her to sit with them. By the time school was over, Martha was so lonely even Connor was beginning to sound good to her. She slumped against her locker, wondering why she hadn't seen him all day. Hi. Remember me? I saw you yesterday in the hardware store. We have writing class together, but I couldn't get your attention. Oh, sorry. I'm in kind of a fog today, I guess. I would be, too. Only worse, I'm Wynn Chambers. <laughs> I guessed that. You all look so much alike, you and Blake and my new advisor. Oh, is Greg your advisor? You'll like him. I already do. 
In fact, it was the high point of my day. Oh, and it's that bad, huh? Hmm. Isn't Bedford what you expected? I didn't even know I was coming here, so I didn't know what to expect. I just woke up one morning and found out everything had changed. Huh. That'd make me sad. I don't like changes. Changes are scary. Hey, you heading home? I'll walk you out. Okay. Do you have any brothers or sisters? I didn't, but now I have this weird stepbrother, Connor. He's going to this school, too. Connor? Oh, the Connor you were with at the store? He's your brother? Stepbrother. Hey, have you noticed how the girls here have been lusting after him? Mm. Well, he's uh, kind of different, isn't he? He sure is. I mean, Connor hardly looks at anyone. I bet he doesn't even know all the girls are staring at him. He knows. Well, would you believe it? There he is, waiting for me. Where? In the station wagon. Do you want to meet him officially? Oh, no. I should be getting home. Oh, come on. Don't be nervous. Even though he's the hottest new sex symbol at Bedford High. Look, Wynn, I know he'll remember you from yesterday. You could come to my house No, and... maybe another time. Hey, Wynn! Martha's heart skipped a beat as Blake Chambers ran towards them from the direction of the gym, his hair still damp from the showers. Hi, cuz. Hey. How's it going, Martha? You survived the first day without too many battle scars? Barely. <laughs> what are you working on here? Hmm. I seem to remember all this horrible stuff. It's not so bad. Don't tell me you like Edgar Allan Poe. You like him or not, we still have to read him. Oh, guess what, Blake? Martha's in Greg's writing class with me. Great. Mm -hmm. So what are you writing? Oh, typical Greg. He's given us some corny assignment for Halloween, like it's not enough. Speak of the devil. Uh, there he is now. Who, Greg? Yeah, over there in the Red Jaguar. Oh. Greg, wait up. Let's catch a ride, Wynn. See you later, huh, Martha? Oh, Blake's not always this rude. Greg must be in a hurry to I go. I can't believe how much alike Blake and Greg are. You too. It's just because I'm tall, and I hate it. No one asks you out when you're my size. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. It'll get better, Martha. Your first day is over. You're not new anymore. Yeah, but I have a lot to catch up on. Even our writing assignment sounds hard. What? Writing a ghost story for Halloween? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be hard, especially for you. Why? Because my dad's a writer? Is he? Oh, I didn't know that. No, I was talking about, you know, your house. What about my house? You really don't know? Nobody told you? Are you talking about the old cemetery? Oh, everyone knows the old Bedford place is evil. What? Well, you see, Martha... There was a murder in your house. Evil? That's what she said. Of course, nobody would tell us. Especially the realtor. He'd be afraid of losing a good sale. I feel like everyone's laughing at us. Not at all. If anything, it makes us irresistibly interesting. So, uh, what happened in our infamous house to make it so evil? A murder. That's all Wynne said. She was in a hurry, had to catch a ride with Greg. Who's Greg? My advisor, Mr. Chambers. Did you know they're all cousins, Greg and Wynne and Blake? You know Blake, the guy in the hardware store. Yeah, how could I forget Blake Chambers? So, who or what is supposed to be making the house so evil? Some ghost, I guess. Oh. Look, I don't know any more about it than you do. Why am I so afraid to tell him about last night? The crying in the trees, the cold, the invisible watcher in the woods. Because he'd never believe me. I'm not sure if I believe it myself anymore. Connor, it's probably just a lie anyway, don't you think? Connor didn't answer, and Martha turned away from him, staring silently out of the window the rest of the way home. The heavy sky now dripped with almost rain, shrouding the world in gray. There was nothing out there, Martha thought. Nothing. She pulled her jacket around her like a cocoon. As soon as Connor had pulled the car to a stop, Martha ran inside, up to her room, and threw herself down on the bed, drained. But no rest came to her. Rubbing her arms against the cold, she went over to the window and stared down into the backyard. I'll never feel comfortable in this room. I hate it. And I can't stand the thought of being alone in this house. Wait a minute. That's Connor down there. Going off into the woods? What's he doing? Connor? 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 Before she realized what she was doing, Martha was standing on the back porch, staring out towards the trees.
Are you out here? Martha felt like the only living person in the world. The evening lay so gray and empty around her. She hunched her shoulders and started resolutely across the yard. Connor, I know you're out here. I saw you from the window. What's he doing anyway? Isn't this the place where I saw the trees move last night? Right about here. What if whoever it was is still here, watching me right now? Martha? <gasps> Connor, where were you? What I are couldn't you doing fo following me around without a jacket? If you get pneumonia, I'll be blamed for it. Why should you be blamed? I'm supposed to be looking after you, remember? Looking after me? I beg your yeah, pardon, but I I'm know, old enough. I know, Here, put on my jacket. Now, come on. Where are we going? I want to show you something. Connor, what are you looking for? I'm cold. Where are we going? Look, look, through the trees, there. Before them lay the cemetery, like the ruins of some ghostly garden. Headstones toppled across the leaf-strewn ground. Where shrubs and vines had once flowered, now there were only masses of brown stems. And in the fast-falling twilight, low-sweeping trees looked like misshapen figures. A light fog had begun to snake among the gravestones, and old, crumbling statues stared back at the intruders through stone eyes. What is that? A mausoleum. Come on. Connor, please, let's get out of here. Look at this inscription. The letters carved in the black stone wall were a foot high. The tomb itself had to be 20 feet tall and just as wide, its double doors barred by thick iron gates which looked like they hadn't been opened in years. Bedford. Isn't Bedford supposed to be the name of our house? The family must have been pretty important. How did you find this place? By accident getting wood? No, I never came this far. It was just so strong, the feeling. What feeling? Damn you, Connor. Why did you bring me here? If you think you can scare wait, me, it won't wait, work. Wait. What is it? Connor, let's go back, please! Hey, 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 you got a pretty strong grip, Martha, for being so little. Sorry, but I mean it. Let's get out of here. Okay. It's gone now, anyway. What's gone? Nothing. Uh, never mind. Let's go back to the house. But Connor, just let's trust just get out. Me. I know the way. Don't cook anything for me, Connor. I'm not hungry. Oh, give me a break. I cook a great omelet. You know, it's getting worse. What is my cooking? All this. The house and everything about it. Now you. Me? Do you want to tell me what happened out there? No, nothing. I just thought you'd enjoy a little sightseeing by twilight. It's a conspiracy, right? Something you and Dad dreamed up before he left. Just have fun with me. You don't look like you're having fun. Thanks for your jacket, Connor. I'm going to bed. I need to rest my overactive imagination. Up in her room, Martha lay across her bed, thumbing through her books. But her thoughts kept returning to the sight of that huge, crumbling monument and to Connor's strange behavior and to what Wynne had said as she'd left her that afternoon. Everyone knows the old Bedford place is evil. What did she mean? Was it something to do with the old cemetery? Or the watcher in the woods? And why couldn't I tell Connor about it? Because maybe I just imagined it. Or maybe, if I never say it out loud, it won't be real. Martha lay there wondering if Connor had finished eating and if he was now nearby in his room. But all she could hear was the sound of the house shifting, sighing in the wind, whispering its secrets, lulling her into a restless sleep. Even in her dreams, the house was still with her. In deep wells of darkness, Martha tossed and turned, vaguely aware of every creak and groan. On every side of her, the walls seemed to be breathing, louder and louder. Then they began to squeeze in, closer and closer. Never find my way around. Mm. Who's there? 
Suddenly, a light came on in the hall, glowing in beneath the bedroom door so that the shadows went slithering off into the corners. Martha glanced around the room. There's something moving beside the closet. Then, slowly, the half-open closet door began to close. Hurry, Martha, get up. I smell smoke. Go downstairs, quick. Wait for me outside. I'm not going alone. I'll follow you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the smoke's really strong down here. It smells like it's coming from the kitchen. Hey, what's the kitchen door doing closed? I left it open. Connor, don't! Just get outside and stay there, and I mean it. The fire must be coming from in here. Martha scrambled out onto the front porch, a wave of smoke billowing out behind her. She ran around the house to the backyard and stood there, shivering in the cold. Connor! Get out of there! It's too dangerous! The house could collapse! Connor, I'm calling the fire department! Don't bother! It's out! Look at this! A dish towel? Do you mean to tell me it that... It was on the stove. I can't believe you were so careless. The house could have burnt down around us. Connor, something was in my closet tonight. I know it. I, I don't suppose it could have been a dream. Was the fire a dream? Okay, okay. You almost kill me. And why should I expect you to worry about something hiding in my closet? If that's what you want to believe. What I want is to get a decent night's sleep for a change. Sweet dreams. Martha stomped upstairs, slamming her bedroom door behind her. But she couldn't shut out the smell of burning cloth or the soft sound of Connor's door closing hours later. And even though she forced herself to search the closet and finally barricaded it with a chair, shapeless fears haunted her dreams the rest of the night. At school next morning, Martha dragged herself through classes. All she was aware of was how everyone seemed to be staring at her. She'd just decided to go for lunch somewhere away from the school when a familiar voice stopped her at her locker. Hey, Martha, you on your way to lunch? Well, I... Let's was... brave the cafeteria, unless you have other plans. No, I'd really like that. Great, come on. What's the matter? Aren't you hungry? Oh, yes, I just... Don't tell me. Diet. You don't need it, Martha. I mean... Look at you. No, I'm not on a diet. I mean, it's... Relax. Just... Put your money away. This is on me. You're the ideal date to take to dinner. It sure wouldn't cost much. Oh, I usually eat more than this. It's just that... Hey, well... I'm kidding. New kid in town, stomach all in knots. I wouldn't be hungry either. Come on over here. Let's get away from the crowds. Okay. I have my own little table over here in the corner. Specially reserved. So, Martha, how's your day going? Okay. Just okay, huh? I hear you've got a terrific advisor. Mr. Chambers? Yes, there seems to be lots of you Chambers around. <laughs> yeah, but my cousin Greg turned out good, not like the rest of us. He's very proud of you. I mean, he should be. All the things you've done and all oh, the Oh, things... I just love sports. I'm lucky I can do what I love, that's all. I was never into sports. I'm too clumsy. You don't look clumsy. You look... what's the right word? Well, hello, Martha. What a surprise. Oh, hi. Hi. Connor, right? Uh -huh. Blake Chambers. Sit down and join us. Thanks. I'm in kind of a hurry. Nice to meet you, though. I've heard a lot about you. What's this, Martha? Your lunch? Since when do you eat cottage cheese? I always eat it. I love cottage cheese, as a matter of fact. Oh, that's funny. Your dad says it makes you sick. See you later. <laughs> Seems like a nice guy. How is he as a brother? Stepbrother. Oops. Sorry. Wynn says your dad's a writer. He writes articles, mostly. Human interest pieces? That sort of thing. Right now he's in Hawaii, on some new assignment. I'm impressed. Too bad you couldn't go along and take some notes or something. It's also his honeymoon. Plus, he's very strict about school. I can sympathize. My old man's a tyrant when it comes to grades. The old story, he wants me to have it better than he did. Sounds like you're doing plenty to make him happy. I enjoy winning, that's all. How do you like your classes so far? Okay, I guess. Can I ask you something? Never on the first date. <laughs> sure, ask away. Our house. The Bedford place. Yes. Is it really... evil? You mean you didn't know? Nobody told you? No. And I'd really like to hear the story, if there is one. I'm not sure you should. I was gonna ask Wynne about it, No, but... don't ask Wynne. Let's go someplace where we can talk, if you don't mind a little fresh air. 
Martha felt uneasy as they crossed the campus towards the athletics field. There was hardly anyone around. A light drizzle had discouraged all but a few joggers on the track. Blake led Martha up into a dry part of the stadium. Have a seat. It's been trying to rain for weeks. Now it probably won't stop till Christmas. Martha, do you believe in ghosts? What are you talking about? I'm talking about your house. The Bedford house. People around here believe that tormented spirits there can't be put to rest. Are you trying to tell me this whole town is superstitious about that stupid place? The house is as old as the town. It was built by the original founders. Most of the family has died out, though. The last heirs put it up for sale last year. I can see why. But the murder's not an old story. It just happened a year ago. I see. The Bedfords were kind of eccentric. The house was too small for them, and it sat there empty for a lot of the time. Then George Bedford, the last heir, decided to return to his roots, so he and his wife and daughter moved back to the house a few years ago. Elizabeth, the daughter, was Wynne's age. Really pretty, a sweet girl. She and Wynne got to be best friends. Her parents often went off to the city and left Elizabeth by herself, so Wynne was good company for her. So far, it doesn't sound very scary, just sad. Someone murdered Elizabeth. Wynne found her at the house, up in her room. Go on. Dennis killed her. Dennis? A guy who used to live here. I went to school with him. He played on the basketball team. That's horrible. He was a total jerk, acted like he owned the whole town, and he took whatever he wanted. He wanted Elizabeth. And for a while, he had her, too, until she dumped him. Why did she? I guess she got tired of all the hot air. He liked to brag, you know, usually about things that never happened. He killed her. But before he did, he put her through hell. Blake, I can't believe it. He never crossed I... Dennis. If he did, he'd find some way to get you back. He sounds like some kind of monster. But he didn't look like one. He could turn the charm on and off like water. But he didn't have any real friends. Even on the basketball team, he was a dirty player. He killed Elizabeth just to get back at her for making him look bad? Yes. First, there were the phone calls. What do you mean? Obscene phone calls. Not just kid stuff. Threats. He told her she'd never go out with anyone again. And he started following her at a distance. Blake, can we He go... left a dead rat on her porch. And one night, he set fire to... A fire? Yeah, they caught it in time, but it didn't matter in the end. He still killed her. But she told someone, didn't she? Why didn't the police do something? That's just it. She didn't tell anyone. Not at first, anyway. But why not? She thought it was a big joke. Then it just made her mad. She wouldn't give Dennis the satisfaction of being intimidated by him. But didn't Wynn know about all this? Didn't anyone? I found out about it after a while, and told Greg. And you both couldn't help? What could we do? There was no proof. Dennis and I never got along. Elizabeth had dumped the guy. The cops would have called it a high school soap opera. And if Wynn had made trouble for Dennis, he might have hurt her. Oh, Blake, He I killed didn't... her on Halloween. We were all at a party, and she was making fun of Dennis, saying how immature he was. And then... Well, later that night, they left the party together, and... We never saw her alive again. Elizabeth left with him. When we went to her house to look for her, it was Wynne who found her. What was left of her. Oh, no. Up in her bedroom. Which bedroom? The one at the back of the house, closest to the woods. Oh, no. Wynne never got over it. She still feels guilty because she let Elizabeth leave with Dennis and never told us. She still has horrible nightmares. I can't remember things sometimes. You see, Wynne was the first one in the Bedford house that night. It must be terrible for her. The next day, they found Dennis's car in the river. It had stormed all night and there was flooding and the car had been washed off the bridge. And in it, they found the knife. So they finally knew. Murder-suicide, they called it. But they never found him. The current was too strong. They never found Dennis. Connor hardly spoke a word on the drive back from school. When they got home, he tossed his books on the hall table and silently turned on the lights. Then he disappeared into the kitchen and began preparing dinner. Martha followed him and sank down at the large table. I found something out today. Blake told you about Elizabeth Bedford's murder. Do you like your chili with or without beans? How did you know? Were you spying on us? You were the only two people sitting on the bleachers. Not hard to miss. Anyway, I did some detective work of my own. I cut class and went down to the newspaper office this morning. Read some pretty unpleasant stuff about this place. Well, you probably don't know half of it. At least not all the important details. Okay, then tell me. Well, 
The Bedford House was built by the same people who founded the town over a hundred years ago. They forgot all about eating. As Martha told the story, Connor just sat there, his chin in his hands, his eyes lowered. Even when she recalled the scene of the murder, Connor just listened, his face unmoved. Connor? Are you in a trance or what? Connor? They're not sure it was Dennis. Of course it was him. He was crazy and jealous and he killed Elizabeth in my bedroom. I don't want to live in a house that's supposed to be haunted. Where someone was killed, people will think I'm weird and bad luck. I'll never have any friends. I thought you didn't believe in ghosts. I... All the coincidences. My room, the phone call, the scarecrow, the fire last oh, night. so now you don't believe I started it. Maybe the house made you start it. Well, did you? No. Maybe you just forgot, left it on, and went to bed. Maybe I had my mind on other things. I know what you think. The phone call was just a joke, and the wind blew the scarecrow up in the tree, and my closet door just closed because of the draft, and... Oh, just leave me alone! Martha ran up to her room and threw herself down on the bed. Maybe it was all coincidences, but Connor was holding something back. She could feel it. And Dennis was dead. And she was in the room where he had murdered Elizabeth. There's something out there, trying to crack the glass. Martha switched off her light. Edging cautiously towards the window, she looked out. For a split second, the clouds struggled apart, and in the pale moonlight, Martha saw a shape on the ground. Oh, that's what it was. Just a branch breaking. Oh, that must be Blake. He said he'd call. With a surge of relief, Martha raced to the hall to get to the phone before Connor answered it. Hello? Hello, Elizabeth. Who is this? <laughs> Who is this? You're dead, Elizabeth. Trick or treat. Who was it? Martha? Who was it on the phone? I don't know. He called me Elizabeth. He said I was dead. It's, wasn't I supposed to answer the phone from now on? Look. <sighs> It's just a crank caller. Everyone in Bedford knows that Elizabeth died here on Halloween. You still think it's funny, don't you? It never entered your mind that something terrible might happen. No! This time, I'll get it. Hello? Hi, it's Blake. Is Martha there? Uh, yeah, she's right here. It's Blake. You think your heart can take it? Get lost, Connor. Anything you say. Hello? Hi, Martha. Listen, Greg and Winter here at my place. We thought we'd head out for a pizza. Want to come along? Now? I know it's short notice. Oh, but... no, no. I'd love to. I'm starving. Great. We'll pick you up in half an hour. Thanks. Connor? Yeah? I'm going out for a while to a restaurant with some friends. Lucky you. See you. When Greg's car pulled into the drive, Blake hopped out, helped Martha into the back seat, and climbed in to sit beside her. Wynne huddled next to Greg in the front seat, turning her face away from the house and not looking up until they were back on the main road. Hey, sure Greg. Like what? what? <laughs> How about giving Martha an exclusive Bedford by night tour? Oh, that'll be fun. You guys, you know nothing's open in Bedford past 9 o'clock. Yeah, even Absolutely. the sidewalks are closed. But we're on our way to the hottest spot in town. Yes, sir. It doesn't even close till 11 o'clock. Oh, let's go. Come on. <laughs> Mm. Oh, this place looks like it's a bit of a dump, mm. Mm. but the pizza's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. Oh, have you Stop. written your ghost story yet for creative writing mm -hmm. class? You know, personally, I wish we'd voted for another mm. subject. A what? Mm -hmm. um, a romance? No. About a mysterious stranger uh, who sneaks into girls' rooms at night? Mm. And a stranger with sexy blue eyes and thick, wavy Oh, hair. cut it out, you two. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of blue eyes... What's the story with your brother? Besides the fact that he's a genius and has every girl in Bedford fantasy. Connor, a genius. I mean, he actually talks in class. He's usually in a world of his own. Mm. And he plays a mean game of basketball. And he cooks, at least better than his mom. Mm. And he likes to walk in the woods. Well, that's nice. What? It shows that he's sensitive as well as... As well as what? Nothing. <laughs> Romantic? Well, maybe. <laughs> well, we sure could use some guys around here with a little sensitivity. Oh, oh, oh. Don't I beg your oh, pardon. I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. <laughs> It had been a long while since Martha had had such a good time, and she hated the evening to end. After dropping Wynn off, Greg insisted that Blake borrow his car to drive Martha home. She felt shy about being alone with him, but Blake soon put her at ease, driving around and showing her the general layout of the town. When the heater in the car got temperamental, Blake's arm slipped easily around Martha's shoulders and stayed there the rest of the way home. 
I'm glad you could come. Me too. Lucky Connor. Why? He gets to live with you. Well, Martha, see you tomorrow. Bye, Blake. Martha stood at the door and watched the car disappear down the drive into the woods. Can it be possible? Blake Chambers with me. There must be something wrong with him. No. He's perfect. Dream on, Martha. It's locked. Why'd he lock it? Is he afraid too? Oh no, I must have left my keys upstairs. Connor! Let me in, I've forgotten my key! Oh damn, he's probably fallen asleep studying, the genius at work. Or he's in the bathroom, clear at the back of the house. Connor! Connor! She edged her way down the side of the house, her eyes darting nervously at every sound, every shadow. The backyard seemed alive with foggy shapes, Martha craned her neck, trying to pick out the bathroom window, the small one, there, right next to the window of her own empty room. Except it isn't empty. There's a light on the ceiling, a pale light, making shadows on the walls. In horror, Martha watched as the light moved, then stopped, then moved again. It's as if it's lost, as if it's searching for something. Martha's hand flew to her mouth, stifling her scream as a silhouette slowly took shape in the window above, uncoiling up the flickering wall. A person was suspended there, watching her. Connor! There's a trouble, Martha. There's someone in my room. Call the police. Hurry. What's the matter with you? I can't go by myself. Okay, okay. I'll take a look. Casually, Connor turned and went inside, up the stairs, straight to Martha's bedroom. As Martha huddled in the hall, he turned on her light and checked every corner of the room, including the closet. There's nothing here. There was something. I couldn't get in the front, so I went around the back looking for you. And there was a light in my room, and he was right here looking out, and... Why wouldn't you let me in? Maybe we better talk about this in the morning. You knew I didn't have my sanity. key. You stood up here and just watched me, probably laughing at Martha, me. Martha, it could have been clouds breaking, or, or me turning on the hall lights, or anything. Look, if you want, I'll sleep in here tonight. You can take my room. No, thank you. Well, okay. Just for tonight. Martha felt strange being in Connor's room, with his books and clothes scattered around, his shirt draped over the back of a chair. It was even stranger getting into his bed. For a long while, she couldn't sleep. When she finally did, she dreamed she was running through the black maze of the house, pursued by a shadow with no face. Next day, late for school and cramming for a test, Martha had no time for suspicions about Connor. But when Wynne took her for a walk at lunchtime, Martha couldn't resist talking about him. What do you think of Connor? I mean, really. I'd like him to carry me off and love me forever. <laughs> Why is it that obvious? No, I'm just not good with boys. I'm too big. Maybe I frighten them off. They know me, but they never ask me out. I'd love to introduce you to Connor. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, only I'm too nervous. No, I don't want you to think you're my friend just because of Connor. When? No, see, I don't. Friends are important to me. My best friend died last year. You may have heard about it. The town's full of stories. Except nobody really talks to me about it. They don't want to upset me. Only I wish they would, because the truth is, I don't remember. They sent me to doctors, but I still can't remember much about that night. People say I found my friend, Elizabeth, and that, um, that someone had killed her, but, but I only remember terrible, horrible fear and the long dark. What's that? Just dark. Darkness that went on and on forever. I try so hard, but I can't remember. That's why I acted funny when we picked you up yesterday. I hadn't been back there for a long time. Oh, thanks for telling me, Wynn. We don't have to talk about it ever again. And you don't ever have to come to the house. No, I want to. I need to. I just have to get up the nerve. Well, whenever you want, it's okay. 
Is this the original part of the town we're in? Yeah, yeah, hasn't changed for maybe a hundred years. I'll bet Bedford's quite a change for you. You must have had a million things to do back in Chicago. Yeah, but now I'm gone, I'd wish I'd done more. You probably had lots of boyfriends there, didn't you? A couple. Boy, I was stupid, though. Why? Well, there was this one guy who really liked me, and he was nice, too, and cute. And my dad thought he was wonderful. But I liked this other guy more. He was so cool and handsome. Ooh, he was such a jerk. <laughs> That's what people said about Dennis, too. That's just like Dennis and Elizabeth. But they're wrong. All of them. About what? About Dennis. Well, yeah, he could be a jerk sometimes, and he was always getting into trouble, but he didn't kill Elizabeth. He couldn't have. He loved her. I thought... Connor heard they broke up that Dennis was kind of upset about it. They did break up, and Dennis wanted her back. He was jealous, that's all, because she was with somebody else, but he never would have done something so... so awful. After they broke up, Elizabeth had a new boyfriend? Yeah, she went with Blake. He never talks about it. He kind of keeps everything in. But when you came and moved into her house, Elizabeth, it really shook everyone up. Not just Blake and me, everyone. Wynn, what are you talking about? You see, Elizabeth was small, like you. And her hair was blonde and about the same length as yours. Even the things you and I laugh about were the same. You're such a nice person, Martha. So much like her. You remind me so much of Elizabeth. That night, it started to rain in earnest, and Martha dreamed she was Elizabeth Bedford. She lay there with the strangest sensation of wakefulness, as if part of herself were trapped inside her mind, while the other part waited in the terror of reality. She dreamed she was dying. She felt each stab of the knife going through her, and everywhere she turned, there were blood-spattered walls. She couldn't see her killer's face. He was wearing a mask, but he was real, and she knew him. Just a nightmare, Martha. I'm scared. Okay. Okay, I'll stay here for a while. You go back to sleep. Morning. Hi. I'm not staying in that room again. Okay. If you want to switch to mine permanently, I'll move my things. No problem. And I'm never going back to that school. Everyone stares at me there. Just because I look like Elizabeth Bedford. I feel like a freak. Like I'm doomed or something. Look, Wynne said you reminded her of Elizabeth. That's all. You're not Elizabeth. Your life isn't her life. No. Hers is over. Come on, let's go. It's been raining all night. At school, as the day dragged on, things went from bad to worse for Martha. When she realized she hadn't done the papers for her last two classes, she collapsed against her locker, feeling too hopeless even to cry. Hi, Martha. You look like you could use a change of scene. I have to pick some stuff up for Wynn's decorating committee. How about cutting class and coming with me? Oh, I can't. Say you're sick. Connor will be waiting for me after school. I'll get a message to him. You'll be home by the time he gets there. Cross my heart. Okay. Great, let's go. We're heading to Whitley. It's even smaller than Bedford. But it's beautiful countryside, isn't it? Mm. Looks even better when it's not raining. My grandparents used to have a farm out here. Before they died, they sold it to my cousins. Mom comes out here every week to get fresh vegetables. I'll be able to find lots of stuff for the decoration committee. What's Wynn's committee decorating for? What? You've been at Bedford a whole week and you don't know? You haven't seen the posters? It's the Halloween dance. This year it's on a Sunday night, so they're giving us Monday off. A party? Like the one last year? Yes. Here we are. 
Are you sure we should just drop in like this? Nobody's home. They're in the city today. Let's head over to the bar and find some pumpkins for the dance. Don't slip in the mud. Come on. <laughs> the huge barn was warm and dusty and felt snug and comfortable after their dash through the rain. Blake pulled some blankets from a stall and tucked one around Martha's shoulders. That's better. I don't want you to get pneumonia. Martha, see that loft up there? Uh-huh. Greg and I used to jump off that to see who could jump the farthest. Come on, let's climb up. I want to show you the view. When Martha reached the top of the ladder, Blake was already there, wrenching open the upper doors. A fine spray of wind wet their faces as they stood looking out at the sodden landscape below. Oh, it's like the top of the world up here. There were even fewer houses over there when we were kids. You could see for miles and miles, and it was only fields. It's beautiful. Look at the colors down there. Dark green and gold and rusty brown. And the gray mist swirling around the trees. Here, you're shaking. I'll shut the doors. Ah, it's cozy here. And there's room for one more. Doesn't it make you feel sad? What? Thinking maybe someday you might have to leave all this? Are you kidding? I love it, but I can't wait to leave Bedford. If I stay here, I won't stand a chance of being anything. What kind of anything? Do you know how close I am to a basketball scholarship? It could be my ticket out of here, Martha. It's what I really want to do, to be. <laughs> I don't usually go around making true confessions to everyone I meet. You know, I don't go around passing them on, so don't worry. You're really something, Martha. Don't, no, Blake. And then there was only the soft patter of rain outside and a soft flutter of birds high in the rafters and Blake's lips soft upon her lips. Blake, why didn't you tell me I reminded you of Elizabeth? Why would you ever think that? Maybe we better just pick up those decorations. Please. Not until we talk about this. I admit that the first time I saw you in the store, you sort of looked like her from the back, but that's as far as it went. You never told me you were serious about her. We were close for a while. That's all. Anyway, it's all in the past. It has nothing to do with you and me now. I guess I better get you home. Don't you have to get the decorations? <laughs> oh, is that what I came here for? <laughs> They loaded up bundles of straw and corn stalks and dozens of pumpkins and drove back on the village road. Martha leaned against the side window, looking out into the gathering dusk. Blake, see that little cemetery over there? Has it been here for a long time? Sure. It used to be owned by the Bedfords until the estate was parceled off. But now everyone from the nearby town is buried there, even the Bedford family. Then what about the cemetery behind our place? That's where the old family and their servants were buried. We're talking back in the 1800s. At one time, the town wanted to move them to the cemetery out here, but the people were afraid of disturbing the old family crypt, so they decided to let the old Bedfords rest in peace. So Elizabeth... Yes, she's buried right over there. Dennis, too. Dennis? But I... Well, I mean, they put up a marker for him, in his memory, in case anyone wants to remember him. Everybody really wants him to be dead, including me. But he is dead. They never found him, Martha. What if somewhere... Dennis is still alive. Well, we made it. I think we beat Connor home. Mm. You're not upset, are you, Martha? You haven't said two words all the way. I'm sorry, Blake. Maybe I'm coming down with something. You can't. You have to go to the Halloween dance. I'm not going. Oh, yes, you are. I don't have a date. You do now. <laughs> so hurry inside and play sick for Connor. What? You've got the flu, remember? <laughs> I'll see you later, okay? Okay. Bye, Blake. Martha watched him go, wishing she'd thought of some excuse to ask him in, at least to wait with her until Connor got home. She let herself in and leaned against the wall. The house was swathed in shadows. Silence echoed around her. Damn you, Connor. Why couldn't you be here? Be okay if I can just forget what Blake said about Dennis and get some lights on. Mm. She found a switch and the hallway stretched ahead of her like a dim tunnel. Martha saw the heavy draperies at the opposite end. The slight stir of velvet. No! 
There are no such things as ghosts. No such things as evil houses. No. She hurried past the yawning doorways up to her room and slammed the door. Then she forced herself to start getting her things together. This would be a perfect time to change rooms, she thought. Like Connor had said. What was that? Something on the stairs. It's coming along the hall. Connor? I guess it's nothing. She put on a tape, turned it up loud, and curled up with the pillows on her bed. This particular song was one of her favorites. A love song. It made her think of Blake, warm and strong beside her, his lips on hers. And she was lulled into sleep. Martha didn't know how long she slept, but somewhere in half-consciousness, she knew something was strange. She realized she'd had another nightmare, where eyes had been watching her from the unfathomable darkness. Then it was a presence, more frightening than the eyes, malevolent, almost inhuman. Martha's eyes flew open, but she couldn't move. She lay still, trying to figure out what was wrong. And then she knew. The light was out, and the tape had stopped. She turned her head slowly towards the closet. It was open. There was someone standing there. In a flash of lightning, she saw the cold glint of eyes. Dear God, he doesn't know that I'm awake, that I can see him. She snapped on the lamp, but even as the light filled the room, Martha knew she would find the closet empty. Nothing was there but the memory of a waking nightmare and her own few clothes. Connor, where are you? You've got to come home. I know I can hear... Don't you like being in the house alone? Who is this? <laughs> You're mine, Elizabeth. Trick or treat. <laughs> Martha raced downstairs to the front door and made a grab for the doorknob, but it was already turning. The door swung open. Hi there. Connor, where were you? Why weren't you here? Oh, I had car trouble. Why? The phone. He knew you weren't here. I think it was in my closet. Oh, you couldn't care less. All this and the flu, too? What flu? The flu they said you had at school? Uh, I did. And Blake happened to come by when I was feeling sick and was good enough to bring me home. Yeah, I'm sure you feel much better now. Uh, at least he cares how I feel. I'm going up to my room. Just leave me alone. Suit yourself. I'll start dinner. What have I ever done to deserve all this? Something was in here. Someone. It was a human shape. I know it. He must be out there now watching. He has to be. Blake said Dennis would tell Elizabeth things he'd seen her do. I keep been watching the house. Where would he have been hiding? Behind any of those hundreds of trees? Or in the graveyard? I've got to cover this window. Where are the tacks? i got to get this blanket up. Nail anything. <sighs> Suddenly, the lamp quivered, its light skittering across the ceiling. This time, Martha knew it was real. The soft creaking sound, the squeak of hinges, the slide of wood against the floor. In the corner of her eye, she saw the closet door move, saw the feet step silently out of the dark. Oh, it's you. Did you know there's a secret passageway from the butler's pantry off the kitchen straight here to your closet? Oh! <laughs> I hate you, Connor. I loathe and detest and despise you. Oh, come on now, Martha. Don't be nice. Tell me how you really feel. Oh! Well, don't you at least want to explore it? I've had enough of your jokes sneaking up here, making sick phone calls, hiding in the woods. You know, you're one sick person, Connor. You don't even know me. You don't know anything about me. I know about as much as you know about me. You like the poems of Emily Dickinson and rock music and Mexican food and making brownies? Red's your favorite color. You had lots of friends in Chicago, especially a guy named Ken. <sighs> and you're afraid everybody thinks you have an overactive imagination. They do think it. Wrong. I don't. And you didn't come into my room before? Or watch from the window? <laughs> you swear? Cross my heart. The Scarecrow. That was the first thing. And then one night outside, I thought I heard crying. I thought someone was there, watching. What? Cr crying? Wh where? In the woods. Then that night, you smelt smoke. I thought I saw the closet door move. And then there was a shadow on the wall in my room, and then he stood in front of my window. You know, I can't decide which is more fascinating. 
Living in an evil house or having a baby sister? Listen to me! Do you believe in the dead coming back to the scenes of their tragedies? Maybe. Well, they never found Dennis's body. What if I do look like Elizabeth? You don't. How would you know? That day I went to the newspaper office. I saw a picture. You both have blonde hair, but so what? Lots of people have blonde hair. It's just that, well, you know, Blake went out with her. Yeah? I'm sure Blake's gone out with every girl in Bedford. Look, why are you even talking about Blake? You were talking about him. Well, I don't want to anymore. Look, Elizabeth was getting phone calls. So am I. She was watched. So am I. And there's a feeling in this house. I know I'm not imagining it. You're not. I feel it, too. Why didn't you tell me you felt it? You were so upset about everything. I didn't want to make it worse. It's been hard for you, too, then. Yeah, I guess. I'm sorry. I didn't even dream Martha, that Martha, I didn't start that fire. I'm sure of it. And I didn't close the kitchen door. And that cemetery. I know this sounds crazy, but I think I was led there. By what? I don't know. A feeling. An overpowering insistence. I just couldn't ignore it, that's all. The mausoleum. There was something there that upset you, right? There was a feeling of danger, of finality. Connor, it was a tomb in a cemetery. You can't get much more final than that. Maybe this old house has other hiding places besides the passage behind the closet. Maybe the house really is haunted, but not by the kind of ghosts people expect. Next day at school, Martha was putting her books in her locker when Greg Chambers interrupted her, and with a look that was friendly but professional, invited her for a talk in his office. Uh, Martha, I've been looking at your test grades, and I have to tell you, your teachers are concerned. Now, don't look so worried. They're not out to get you, and I'm not the enemy here. So let's have it. Well, I've been kind of tired. Tired? You look like a zombie. What's wrong, Martha? It's... It's just the house. The Bedford house. What do you mean? It's history? I guess. Every town has its spooky old house. Bedford's no exception. Somebody was murdered there. Martha, every old house must have a tragedy or two to its credit. In, in the end, it's just a house. Just a house? Where fires start suddenly and doors open with no one there? What are you talking about? It's true. There's even a secret passageway behind my closet. Connor says there could be lots more. Well, the house is over a century old. Years ago, it used to hide runaway slaves. Elizabeth's father told me himself the, the place was supposed to be full of tunnels and secret rooms. He said there were even ways to get from the house to the cemetery out back. Maybe just rumors. Who knows? Another thing. Someone's been trying to scare me on the phone. Calling me Elizabeth. People do weird things at Halloween. Look, Martha... I'm sorry about all these coincidences, but please don't take them so seriously. It's affecting your work. I'll be glad to talk to your dad about all this when he gets back. Don't bother. He doesn't understand why I don't like the house. He wouldn't even understand why Wynne doesn't like it. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Martha, you've been good for Wynne. It's nice to see her smile for a change. I, I don't suppose she's talked to you about what happened that night? Not much. She told me she can't remember things, that's all. Only the long dark she keeps dreaming about. Mm. Do you have any idea what she means by it? No. It, it must be that it was stormy that night and the house was so dark. Or maybe she blacked out for a second when she saw Elizabeth's body. It's, it's hard to say. Greg, tell me. Do you think Dennis drowned? Of course he drowned. They found some of his clothes miles downriver. Martha, you have enough to cope with right now without inventing more things. Remember, you can talk to me any time. That's what I'm here for. Martha felt tired and humiliated. It was the first time a teacher had ever had to talk to her about her grades. She didn't feel any better by the end of the day. Oh, look, Martha, if I can help you at all, I'd be glad to. I could come to your house. We could study together. Oh, I mean, if you want me to. Lynn, are you sure? You know, I'd love you to come, but if you feel at all funny oh. about it, I'd understand no, perfectly. No, no, I want to. It's time, and I want to. And I'll make sure Connor's home. Oh, Martha, you wouldn't. No, please don't say anything. Relax. Oh. He's weird, but I don't think he bites. Well, speak of the devil. There he is. Now, take it easy. Oh, I'll just introduce you. I, um, I, I think I, oh, I, I... You finished glasses yet, Martha? Oh, hi, Connor. 
Um, you remember Wynn, don't you? Sure, the hardware store, right? Hi, Wynn, how are you? Fine. Thanks. We're going to the coffee shop, Connor. Where do you want me to meet you later? Ah, uh, out in the parking lot, about five o'clock. Okay. You should come out to the house sometime, Wynn. Nice seeing you. Yeah, you too. What is it about him? I guess I just don't see it. Ah, uh, it's hard when the boys in your family are more popular than you are. But you must see something in Blake. Oh, yeah. He's handsome, and he's charming, and he's athletic, and he's so nice, too, except to me. You're crazy about him. You know it. But he must have a flaw somewhere. Only one. He likes to win. <laughs> now, come on, Martha. Let's go get that chocolate, and you can tell me all about Connor. Now, oh, really, brother. does he like it here? You're sure he doesn't miss no, chocolate? He oh, by the way, Martha, I hear you're going to the Halloween dance with Blake. Yes. Maybe we could go together. Oh, no, I don't have a date, but thank you. Are you sure? Yeah, really. I'm supposed to be in charge of refreshments as well as being on the decorating committee, so I wouldn't have much time to dance anyway. Wynn, Blake told me about what happened last year, about your finding Elizabeth. He said I shouldn't talk to you about it, but I think you should know that I know. Blake's always worrying about me, but if he really cared, he wouldn't say that Dennis killed her because I know he didn't. I think you're the only one who believes that. But it's true. What about all Dennis's threats? And the phone calls? Martha, the voice on the phone was always disguised. And Elizabeth never saw whoever was following her, not clearly. Look, I told you, Dennis loved Elizabeth. He wanted to get her back, not kill her. If only I could remember that night. Do you remember anything? I know that I found her in her room. And all the blood. I remember Blake and Greg running up the stairs and shouting. And... And what? The dark. The long dark. And it lasted forever. So cold. Oh, you never get over something like that. I think about it every single day. About Dennis, too. You see, he made Elizabeth feel special, she told me. He was handsome and wild. And romantic. Blake didn't think so. Oh, Blake was jealous. They were both superstars on the basketball team. Dennis was a real hothead and showed off all the time. And then he made the all-state team his first year, and Blake didn't. But all that had nothing to do with Elizabeth. Lynn? Hmm? What do you think happened to Dennis? He's dead, Martha. I think he killed himself. I think when he heard Elizabeth was dead, he just gave up. Once he said he would do that, and we laughed at him, because it sounded so dramatic. I am so sorry now that I laughed. Here, drink your chocolate. Oh. You okay? Yeah, thanks. Martha put down her cup and stared out the window onto the empty street, gleaming wet in the late afternoon light. A traffic light blinked, turning the puddles into pools of dark red blood. Martha wiped the steam from the window and pressed her nose closer to the glass. Then she saw it. Caught in the shafts of pale light on the street, something like an image on the edge of consciousness, not quite formed. Oh, it's hot in here. I think I need some air. Excuse me, Lynn, for a sec. Okay. She stepped out onto the rain-washed sidewalk. A slow breath of wind trailed soggy leaves through the gutter, and Martha jumped back from them as if they were alive. There was no one there. The street was silent. Martha? Oh, you scared me. What's the matter? I just felt faint for a minute. It's all right. Oh, I guess we're both kind of messed up right now. Come yeah. on, let's walk. Ooh, it's getting cold. Well, at least it's not far back to the school. Oh, wait. What is it? Oh, I'm not sure. I thought... Crazy? I, th I thought I heard footsteps. I was probably just leaves or something. Look, before you know it, I will be imagining Mr. Smith's mannequin coming after us. What mannequin? <laughs> Back there in the shop window. See it? See? Oh. He likes to leave it outside his shop during the day. Attract the customers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I was about to have hysterics back there over a storefront dummy. Hey, Wynn, I'm supposed to be the one with the overactive imagination, not you. <laughs> Come on, let's go wait over there by the school doors. It's drier. Well, where's Connor? Didn't he say meet at 5 o'clock? He'll be here, Wynn. Ooh, come closer, out of the rain. I'll wait here with you till he comes. Oh, no. Oh, no, Martha, I forgot. Darn. Uh, I'm, I'm supposed to babysit. I promised I would be there. Then go on. I'm a big oh, girl are you now. Sure? Yes. I have to go up to my locker anyway. Oh, I forgot a history book I need for Tuesday. Oh, you're positive. 
I'm positive. Okay. I mean, Bedford's not like Chicago. You don't have to carry a gun. No. All right, see you then. Bye. Bye. Martha pushed open the heavy school doors. Inside, she felt sure there would be after-school activities going on, but there was no one around. Quickly, she walked past dark, empty classrooms to the main staircase, up towards her locker on the second floor. Just as she reached the bottom stair, she heard it. A footstep, light as a whisper behind her. She turned and looked, but the hall was empty. It's just the old building creaking. God, I'm shaking. Look at me. Come on, Martha, pull yourself together. I've got to get that book for Tuesday. If I get another bad mark, Dad'll kill me. She started up, angling her body so she could see down to the hallway below. At last, she reached her locker, grabbed her book, and slammed the locker door shut. Suddenly, the hall was plunged into blackness. <gasps> then, she heard them again. The footsteps. Slow, steady footsteps coming up the stairs. Hello? Is that the janitor? I came back for a book in my locker. Kitty, you turn the lights back on, please. One stair at a time, unhurried, the footsteps came towards her. Huh? Wild with terror, Martha groped backwards along the wall, stumbling through the darkness. She felt her fingers slide over a light switch, and she hit it again and again, but nothing happened. Desperate, Martha began to run. She knew there was a second set of stairs to her left, behind the double doors. If she could just reach them, she could escape. She bumped against a wall, fought to keep her balance, reached the end of the hall, and grabbed at the door. They won't open. I can't get out. Where is he? Where can I go? Somehow, she remembered there was a classroom off to the side and dived into it, slamming the door shut and falling over the furniture until she found the back windows that she knew opened onto the fire escape. With all her remaining strength, she tugged at the window, but it stuck fast. I'm trapped in here. Oh, God. No! In the shadows, on the other side of the room, she saw the door handle turn slowly. Silently, the door began to open. Someone came into the room and stopped. A hand came out of the darkness, down hard on her shoulder. Ow! Martha broke away and hurled herself towards the door. Ah! For one instant, it stuck. Then it popped open, spilling her out into the hall. Ah! As she landed on the floor, her arm made an awful cracking sound. Ah! She pulled herself up and ran, fell, ran again. She stumbled down the stairs and threw herself against the exit door at the bottom. It was locked. Again, she hurled herself against it and pain shot like a knife up her shoulder. No! No, God, no! Her attacker was on the stairs behind her. But how far behind, Martha couldn't tell. She wondered crazily where there was left to run. And then she remembered. There was a side door in the teacher's lounge that the students weren't allowed to use. She pulled herself down the hall made a turn, heard the footsteps falter as if confused. And in that moment, she found the door, hit the metal bar to swing it open, and burst out into the cold wind and rain, into a different kind of darkness, a paler darkness, where streetlights glowed through fog. Connor! Connor! <laughs> Running wildly through the rain, Martha saw the parking lot and then the familiar family station wagon easing towards her. She looked behind her, and a black silhouette disappeared into the darkness. Oh, please. Help me. Hey, Martha, Martha. Hey, it's okay. I've got you. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, my arm. Yeah, I bet it hurts. You nearly twisted it off. The doctor says I can take you home soon. I don't want to go home, Connor. Somebody tried to kill me. I know. I called the police, but they couldn't find anyone. They, they didn't take me too seriously. Of course they couldn't find anyone. He ran away when he saw your car. Where were you anyway? You said you'd be here. I just told you. When you didn't show up on time, I went to look for you. I couldn't get into the school, and I couldn't find the... Martha! Oh, Martha! What happened? Sure. What are you doing here? Broke that is some cast. I oh. fell down some stairs. Someone was following me and... Turn out the lights and... <laughs> I'm calling the police. I already did. Wait. What was that you said about the lights? The lights went off and he... Martha, came... there was a power failure tonight because of the storm. The lights were out all over town no. for a little while. He turned them off. He... It's all right, Martha. Take it easy. Uh, Connor, can I talk to you for a minute? Look, um, I know Martha's under terrible strain right now. New family, new school. She talked to me 
told me about the house. She went on about secret passageways, yeah, fires. Yeah, it's a strange house. Yeah. Uh, look, I'll be glad to do what I can, but you might consider professional help. Greg, Martha's fine. But thanks for the offer. The next day was Saturday, and Martha, still feeling the effect of the painkillers, slept till noon. She woke up in Connor's old room. Outside the window, she heard coughing and sneezing and the sound of hammering. Connor was on a ladder up against the house. Good morning, Connor. What are you doing? <laughs> Good afternoon. <coughs> I promised your dad I'd fix these shutters before he got back. You don't sound so good. Oh, I'll live. How are you feeling? Okay, I guess. Hey, there's someone coming up the drive. I think we have a visitor. Hey, there's someone coming up the drive. I think we have a visitor. Who is it, Connor? It... it looks like Wynn. I don't believe it. Hi, Wynn! <coughs> hey, stay there! Martha will be right down. Hi, Wynn. Hello, Martha. I heard about what happened to you last night. I feel so awful about it. Hey, don't feel bad. I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I shouldn't have left you. I shouldn't have gone into the school. Come on up to my room. You're just in time to help me wrestle into my clothes. Okay. I'm sorry about your arm. Yeah. I'm going to look great for the party tomorrow with this cast on. You'll have to sign it. You should hear this. As they started up, Connor came in the front door and stood at the foot of the stairs watching them. Wynne's eyes were darting nervously all around. When she reached the landing, she stared in silence at all the doorways and then headed straight for the back bedroom. Connor followed them up quietly. Oh, well, not that room, Wynne. I'm in this room for now. Oh, oh, I'm just so used to going to Elizabeth's room. Well, I just feel too weird about that room. I've traded with Connor. How did you get out here anyway? I borrowed Greg's car. Oh. He doesn't know about it yet. <laughs> It must be so hard for you to come back in here. To remember? You know, if you don't want to... No, 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 I have to do it. If I don't get this figured out, I'll spend my whole life with a blank page in my mind. Martha? Why did you ask me yesterday what I thought had happened to Dennis? What are the chances of his oh. still being alive? Oh. Alive? Here. No. Sit down on the bed. It's possible, Thanks. isn't it, Wynn? They never found him. If he was crazy enough to kill Elizabeth, couldn't he still be out there, thinking somehow that she's still alive? Uh, when isn't that possible? Uh, if he were alive, I'd know. He'd try to contact me somehow. He always talked to me about Elizabeth because he knew how close the two of us were. And he didn't kill her, I know it. Well, yeah, how can you be so sure? He didn't want her going with Blake, that's all. Any more than Blake wanted him going back to Elizabeth. They were always rivals in girls and basketball so and scholarship. So Dennis was pretty possessive? Yes. And had a bad temper? Yes. So they could have had an argument and Dennis could have lost his temper and done something uh, violent? I guess so, but couldn't anyone have done that? And when Dennis found out she'd been killed, he killed himself? Couldn't it have been a coincidence that his car went off the bridge? Or couldn't the same person have killed them both? Lynn, that's pretty far-fetched. And no more far-fetched than calling Dennis a murderer. Connor, don't you see? I, I have to try to remember for Dennis's sake. All the doctors I went to, they couldn't make me remember. But now this house is back in my life again, and it's like it was meant to be. Like somehow Elizabeth and Dennis want me to find out what really happened. Oh, this sounds so silly. No, no, it isn't silly. We'll help you. Why don't we go downstairs, and I'll rustle up some soup and sandwiches. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Mm. Thanks. I feel better. Well, if this rain doesn't get any worse, I might get those shutters finished today. Oh, by the way, Martha, I boarded up that panel in your closet. I thought you did that before. That's probably what caused the drafts. Made it so cold in that room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wynn, did you know that there's a secret door inside the closet in my old room? Um, um, of course I know about it. I haven't thought about it all this time. There's supposed to be all kinds of secret tunnels and things here. Elizabeth's father told us. 
But we weren't allowed to use them. He boarded up the one in Elizabeth's room, but... But of, what? Well, Elizabeth tore it down, so Dennis could use it. No fool, Dennis. Was he the only one who knew about it? And Blake. Blake? Yeah, she told him, too, when she started going out with him. There was one secret way from the cellar to the study and one from the attic to the pantry. Was there one that led outside? Oh, I, I don't know. No, I mean, another way someone could get into the house. I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You're doing fine. <sighs> if only I could bring it all back. Now, tomorrow's Halloween. Let's go back to Halloween night a year ago. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Is it too painful? I'll try. We'll help you. We, um, okay. We all went to the party at school that night. Elizabeth was really mad because she'd gotten another crazy phone call. She said she'd had it with Dennis. He was just too immature. And Blake was mad, too, hoping Dennis would be there so he could let him have it once and for all. Oh, but they weren't really serious. They were more interested in having a so good time. So you were all there? Yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't have to have a date or anything. Uh, Blake and Elizabeth kind of made themselves scarce. Everyone was supposed to unmask It was a at costume party? Yeah, just like we have every year. Did anybody actually see Dennis come in? Could they recognize him? I did. He asked me if Elizabeth was there. I told him she was with Blake, and Dennis looked really angry and walked off. I didn't see him again for a while, and then Elizabeth and Blake had a fight. About what? Um, Dennis? I'm not sure. But Greg came up to the refreshment table and told me Blake had stormed out of the gym. Greg went out looking for him, and I started to look for Elizabeth, but I couldn't find her. Well, there are just so many people all in costume. Okay, so what did you do then? I was scared. I went out to go get Greg, and then I saw them in Dennis's car, pulling out of the parking lot. Who? Dennis and Elizabeth. I yelled, and uh, Elizabeth leaned out the window and said they were only going to her house to talk and not to tell Blake because he'd be mad. She said they needed to get something straight, and they'd be right back. So you covered for her? I lied to Greg. I told him Elizabeth had gotten sick, and we were going to go to my house for a while. What'd you do then? I went home. Just for a while, my folks were out. And then I went back to school and sat in Greg's car waiting for Elizabeth. For how long? I don't know, about an hour. Then Blake came up in his car. He looked upset. His clothes were all wet, and he just sat there for a long time staring. And then he got out and went back into the gym. And Elizabeth wasn't back yet? No. And I was really starting to panic. I went in and told Greg and Blake the truth, that she wasn't with me at all. And where had Blake been? He said he'd just driven around for a while, and then he'd left his car and walked in the rain. Oh, he was furious I'd let Elizabeth go like that. I have never seen him so mad. I felt awful. Elizabeth trusted me. I could have stopped her. <gasps> and she died. But you didn't know. And it wasn't your fault. What happened when you got here? to the house. It took us a long time. Blake was driving and we had a flat tire and we were all yelling at each other. Okay, so you're at the house. Uh -huh. What do you do now? Let's go into the hall, Wynn. Try to remember what you did. It was storming when we got here. Blake started banging on the door. It was locked and there was only one light on in Elizabeth's room. But Greg broke a window on the terrace and we got inside. That's it, Wynn. You go ahead. Oh. We're right here with you. Let her go on her own, Martha. Blake kept yelling, don't let her go up there. And Greg tried to grab me, but I went faster, and I started for the stairs. Connor, maybe we better stop. Shh. Then what, Wynn? I went up, and the light was on, but I couldn't see anyone. And I think I called her name. She didn't answer. Oh, it was so quiet. And I kept saying her name, Elizabeth? Elizabeth? But she wouldn't answer. Connor, we can't let her go in there. Leave her. She's got to do this. I went in, into a room, and... Um, you're, you're in her room now. Uh, what do you see, Wynn? I, uh... She's lying here on the bed, and her mouth is open. But I can't hear her screaming. And the room is so red. It's so red, and it's wet, and it's... In, uh, and she doesn't look like Elizabeth Wynn? anymore. Wynn? Wynn, she what are you look looking like at? Elizabeth What's anymore. over there? The closet, it's open. The door is open. What do you see? The, um, the dark. It's so long. It lasts forever. It just What's goes dark? on. dark? Wynn, did the lights go out that night? It goes on. What? How long? On. How long did it last? I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> Connor, I don't feel a bit sorry for you. You should know better than to fix shutters in the rain. Uh. But I am sorry you're not coming tonight. Oh, don't tell me you might miss me. No, I might need protection. Uh, from Blake Chambers? Don't laugh at me. Connor, you know this is Halloween. 
What if Dennis really isn't dead? What if he comes back tonight? It could be him, you know. Yeah, it could be anyone. Look, you haven't got any more phone calls, have you? What about that night at school? That was no accident. Maybe the guy thought he was chasing someone else. Oh, but I can't believe that. You're worried too, aren't you? <laughs> I'm too sick to be worried. <laughs> but okay, that's it. I'm coming. Oh, no. <coughs> You're too weak to get out of bed, much less be my bodyguard. Ugh. But I can't stay in this house tonight. I admit it. I'm too scared. I'll stay at Wynn's. I'll leave her number in case you need me. I won't need you. Connor, I'm sorry. I'll go out. Get out of here. Okay. Bye. Hey, Martha? Yeah? Be careful. Martha's heart leapt as she heard the car honking outside. She ran out into the rain, pulling her shawl around her. As she came up to the car, she stopped and stared. Something hideous was sitting in the driver's seat, grinning at her under a hooded cape. <laughs> Blake? <laughs> What's going on? I'm death. Climb on in. <laughs> the gym at Bedford High School was transformed. It was now almost completely dark, with only jack-o'-lanterns glowing on every table. It swarmed with unearthly creatures, all hiding behind costumes, masks, and disguises, until the stroke of midnight, when the unmasking would begin. Die, slave! <laughs> Good one, Greg. <laughs> I thought I had the perfect disguise. Especially with my trusty axe. I get to use it on the bad kids. Chaperone's prerogative. <laughs> I'm here, have some matches. Uh, your jack-o'-lantern's gone out. Yes, yeah, so just be careful with the decorations. <laughs> Thanks. Here. Oh, no, you keep them. For a souvenir. Anyone seen Wynn? Uh, yeah, she's the witch over there, brewing up the punch. Uh, complete with warts and missing teeth. Oh, poor Wynn. Well, she had to serve drinks all night. Uh, and what do you mean, poor Wynn? I happen to be her date, you know. <laughs> Sorry, Greg. I think she'd rather be with Connor. Except he's down with the flu or something. Oh, too bad. Mm. Hey, gypsy lady, how about a dance? I'd love to. Uh, Martha, if he gets out of line, just put a spell on him. <laughs> he's so funny. I love him. The dance floor was so crowded, it was hard to know who you were dancing with. Pressed up close to Blake, Martha still kept looking nervously round the room. It could be anyone, Conrad said, and Martha knew he was right. Her eyes probed the pulsating darkness. Anyone could be hiding in that swirling crowd, watching, waiting. Martha! Oh, Martha you scared me to death. Oh, sorry, sorry, my clothes are so black, they kind of blend in. Hey, that's a nice costume, Martha. I almost didn't recognize you. But I know Blake and Greg over there. Well, you ought to, when you made all our costumes. Wow. The three of us all look the same. Oh, how's Connor, Martha? Oh, miserable. But it's good for him. Makes him more sympathetic to the human condition. You sound tired yourself. Are you okay? Yeah, I am tired. I was up all night decorating this place. Looks great. Thanks. I'll be glad when Halloween's over. Well, come and sit with us for a while. No, 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 I can't. I have to mind the punch. Stop by the table sometime. We'll yeah. do that. Every chance we get. So you two can talk. <laughs> Blake? How did you ever end up with someone nice like Martha? <laughs> After five numbers were over, Martha was begging to sit down. Blake led her back to her table and went for some food. Martha leaned back and stretched, suddenly realizing that at last she was enjoying herself. Maybe, she thought, just maybe the whole thing was a prank. All the calls and the horrors, all just someone's sick joke. Martha? When? Me Sorry, on me like Martha, Martha, oh my, he's back. I, I looked up and there he was, just standing there watching me. Who? Dennis. I saw him in the crowd. Oh, no. Are you sure? Yes. When he realized I'd seen him, he just disappeared. He could be anywhere. Martha, he's dead. Why is he here? Calm down. We've got to get oh, help. Oh, God, what am I going to do? Just come on. We've got to find Greg and Blake. Martha, Martha, I can't see them. There are just too many people. Everybody looks alike. What are we going to do? Just take it easy. He's Greg? Blake, take Where it easy they? when they've got to be here somewhere. Hold on to my hand. No, that's not No, him. I think I'm Maybe they're sick. in the other room. Martha, I've got to get to the restaurant. Okay, okay, stay go. in there. You'll be safe there. Don't worry, I'll find them. Greg, Blake! Martha, Martha Stevenson, lucky girl tonight. There's a call for you, Martha. Martha! Oh, there you are, there you are. There's a phone call for you. You can take it in the locker room. Oh, Martha. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Martha's first thought as she finally recognized her own name was that Blake was calling her. 
then she realized it was the band leader. She raced into a back room and grabbed the telephone from a bored looking chaperone. Hello? Hello, this is Martha Stevenson. <laughs> <sighs> Leave me alone. Whoever you are, do you hear me? There's no one at home, Elizabeth. It's Halloween and they're all dead. <laughs> no, no. What have you done to Connor? Trick or treat, Elizabeth. <sighs> Martha didn't know how she got there, but suddenly she was standing outside in the pouring rain, fighting for breath. Martha, what's up? I've got to get home. Something's happened to Connor. What? Uh, hey, Wynn, she's over here. Martha, Martha, what's the matter? You were right, Wynn. I just had a phone call and he said Connor was dead. Martha, Wynn's right about what? I saw Dennis. What? He didn't die like everyone thought. He's the one who's been threatening me. Will Blake take me home now, please? Wait here, both of you. Up at the car. No, Wynn, if Connor's hurt, I'll never forgive myself. They piled into Greg's car. Martha, clenching Wynn's hand for dear life, had a sudden crazy urge to laugh. In all the excitement, they'd forgotten to take off their masks. A gypsy, a witch, and an executioner, all bound for fate in a car driven by death. Ah! Just take it easy, Blake. You're going to kill us. Everything's under control, Greg. When they reached the house at last, Martha was first out, ripping off her mask, sloshing through the mud and bursting open the front door. She raced upstairs. Connor! Connor! Martha? Thank you just a minute. Oh, Connor. What are you doing home? What's going on? Martha was halfway into Connor's room when suddenly the whole house was plunged into blackness. The others, groping their way upstairs, cried out behind her. She heard Connor searching for the light switch, and then something else, a soft sliding sound in the wall. She moved into the room, and then she knew that they weren't alone. Connor! Something moved in the shadows. It seemed to have come out of the wall, and now was waiting for them to make the next move. Then, close by, Martha heard it. A groan and a soft hiss of metal slashing through the air. Something fell beside her, and Connor's hand came out of nowhere, closing around her own hand. Connor pulled her with him like a rag doll as he groped his way through the dark. Come on, Martha, hurry! She felt Connor's body pressed against her, heard his struggle to breathe, sensed they were in a small passageway of some kind. Then, in the blackness, she heard the wall sliding shut behind them and hands beating on the other side. Connor squeezed ahead of her. Martha realized they were on a narrow stairwell. Suddenly, Connor slipped and threw out his arms. His grip tightened on her, and they started to slide down, down through clinging spider webs, down the steep stairway, crashing down into a heap at the bottom. Oh. Where are we, Connor? I don't know. Are you all right? No, I'm hurt, Martha. I think I'm bleeding. Oh, no. Connor was now shivering uncontrollably, and Martha wrapped her shawl around him and prayed. Suddenly, the wall beside them opened up. Reaching out for each other, they both fell through the gaping hole onto a stone floor, damp and freezing cold in utter blackness. <coughs> I, think, I think we're somewhere in the cellar. Oh, listen. I don't hear anything. That's what I mean. Nobody's following us anymore. Then, where is he? Wait. Here. Greg gave me these matches at the party. A souvenir. They were in some kind of storage closet, surrounded by rotten shelves of old bottles, boxes, and jars. On one wall was a huge door. Connor tried it first. Then they both braced their shoulders against it, but it wouldn't budge. Uh, the others are out there somewhere! Help! Oh, they've got to hear us! Help! Help! <laughs> No one will ever hear you again. Don't you understand? I'm the one who really loved you, but no. You always wanted to be together. And now you will be. Forever. In the dark, Martha heard a noise, like a small spurt of flame. Trick or treat. There was a hiss and crackle in the quiet, and a tendril of smoke began to curl under the door into Martha's face. She reached out to Connor. He's going to burn us alive. He thinks I'm Elizabeth and you're Blake. Come on, Martha. Keep fighting. There has to be a way out of here. We can't. It won't open. Not this way. We just don't have the strength. Help! Somebody! Help! Get down on the floor. It's easier to breathe. 
I'm sorry, Connor. What for? Everything. <coughs> Getting you into this. Oh, you don't sound like you think we'll get out of here. I don't think we... <laughs> you don't know either, do you? You never did know me very well. The shells. Martha, get something to break down the door. Okay. Connor, there's something behind here. A tunnel or, or something. I don't even think it's boarded up. It's just junk in front of us. Come on. We can get through here. Easy. <laughs> They crawled into what seemed like a narrow tunnel, echoing with their breaths and the soft scurrying of rats. Martha felt like they were crawling further and further away from help, into the earth and darkness forever. Then Connor stopped moving. Connor? Or, a door. Are you? There's a door at the end. It's opening! Push! Push! Old rusty hinges groaned. The opening widened slowly, and the tunnel was filled with hazy light. Connor pulled Martha forward. Come on, just a little further. I can stand here, Martha. We're, we're in the mausoleum. For a split second, Martha thought she was in a dream. She seemed to be floating ahead of Connor into a harmless, wondrous world. The light hurt her eyes. Hazy and bright all at once, clawing up the walls where the dead lay in their resting places, dancing in a fiery ring around an altar wreathed with candles. The flickering light pulsed through the shadows. And all around, there was the stale, sweet smell of dead flowers, of death. Don't look, Martha. What is it? Martha, I think we just found Dennis. <gasps> But Martha, staring back at Connor, saw something else suddenly gliding up behind him. A tall black figure came out of the shadows, its death-like mask reflecting the hundreds of tiny candles on the altar. Connor! Watch out! He has a knife! <laughs> Please! Dennis! How did you get out? Elizabeth, why are you making me do this again? Please! Why? Why are you doing this? Can't you see? I'm not Elizabeth. I'm Martha. Elizabeth's dead. You killed her. Why did you do it, Blake? You couldn't have hated them so much. You could have anything you wanted. I want you, Elizabeth. Trick or treat. Martha never even had time to scream. She saw the blade plunging downwards once more. Then the doors burst wide open. The wind and rain roared into the tomb. And from outside, two bodies seemed to hurl themselves forward, flinging death away. Get off me! Get off me! Hold her, Blake! Blake! But I thought it was you! Get her down on the floor! They're dead, Wynn! Both of them! Did you hear me? They're dead! Connor! Oh, Blake! I think Connor's hurt! Here, roll my shirt up and hold it against him. It's all right, Connor. You're going to be okay. Just hang on. Martha. I'm right here. Hey, are you all right? Yes, thanks to you. Why didn't you let me keep him, Elizabeth? The voice wasn't Wynne's voice, but it was coming from her mouth. Huddling in the corner, Wynne drew her knees up, curled herself into a ball, and began to rock, very slowly, watching them, like a stranger, through dull, lifeless eyes. You thought you loved Dennis, didn't you, Wynne? Why didn't you tell us how you felt? You hated him. You would have fixed it so we couldn't be together. He didn't love you, Wynne. He loved Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. She didn't want him. She was through with him. I was the one who loved him best. You followed him that night, didn't you? I had to. He was going to get her to come back to him. I had him all to myself for a while. I had someone who loved me. Wynne, he was using you to keep Elizabeth. He That's loved all. me. He would have stayed with me. What did you do that night, Wynne? How did you get Elizabeth alone in her room? I just went in. Just walked in. <laughs> they didn't even hear me. They were laughing and talking, and I could hear the bed, and they didn't even know I was there. And then I made a noise, like a prowler, and I went to the cellar, and Dennis came down, just like I knew he would. And, and you hit him, didn't you? I had to. I had to do that. I took a knife from the kitchen. I went up the secret stairs to her closet. She was still on the bed, just waiting for him, smiling. I didn't have a choice. Really, I had to. She didn't even fight me, not really. She was just so surprised. 
What did you do with Dennis? I went back to tell him the news that we were finally free, but... But he wouldn't answer me. He wasn't moving. He wouldn't talk. It was Elizabeth's fault Dennis got hurt. If she'd stayed away from him, he never would have... Greg, is that you? Yes, when it's me. I was just telling them about Dennis. I was going to tell them how I put his car there on the bridge. I was just going yes, to... Yes, yes, sweetheart. I did I you. tell you about my dream? Yes, you told me. About the long, long dark... The crawl space. The secret passage. Blake, that's what she meant. She must have killed Dennis and then brought him here to the mausoleum. It was Greg who figured it out. When we couldn't find you upstairs, we put the fire out and broke down the door. Then we saw the tunnel and Greg remembered the stories about the secret passageways leading to the cemetery. Oh, Greg! Lucky I had my trusty axe, huh? The police and the ambulance are on their way. I, I called them before... Oh, Connor. Are they going to take me away, Greg? Yes, to some place where you'll be safe. But I don't think I can go. Uh, See, Dennis wouldn't want me to leave You'll him. get better there, Wynn. No, you won't let them take me, will you, Greg? Oh, Martha, look out! No, Wynn! With a shriek, Wynn threw herself on Martha, slamming her head down hard against the stone floor, bringing the knife up against her throat. Martha felt a crack of stone against her skull. She began to lose consciousness. Faraway voices blurred. The shadows swarmed with lights and shouts and figures. Then, Martha was in Blake's arms, and past his shoulder, she could see Wynne struggling, Wynne being held and dragged away by three policemen. Wynne's face, a demon's face, glaring back in poisonous fury. Elizabeth! Elizabeth! Why did you come back, Elizabeth? He's mine! You can't have him! You can't get away from me! I've been in the house all along, Elizabeth, watching and listening. <laughs> You, Elizabeth. You can't take Dennis away from me! Is that him? He's got a knife. Uh, has he lost a lot of blood? Uh, yeah. Uh, Are you all right? Blake, what's happening? Where are they taking Connor? Shh, it's all right. We called the ambulance. He's been hurt. Uh, uh, okay. Well, be careful with him, please. Yeah, just take it easy, miss. Is he uh, a friend of yours? My brother. Name? Connor. Connor Wheeler. Okay. We'll take care of him. You can uh, come and see him later. He's going to be okay. They told me so, I promise. Oh, Blake. Connor knew. Knew what? When we first found the cemetery, he knew. He felt some kind of danger here. Can we go to the hospital now? Sure we can. I almost lost you tonight, Martha. And it was a terrible feeling. Does Connor know how lucky he is? Lucky? Yeah. To have you as a sister. Martha thought of Connor, so still and pale as he was taken away. How annoyed he'd be when he woke up to find himself in the hospital. She saw herself beside his bed and Blake there with her. And she smiled when she thought how that look would creep across Connor's face. And she wouldn't even mind. Martha looked into Blake's warm brown eyes and kissed him again. I'm the lucky one, she said, and she meant it. That was Trick or Treat by Richie Tankersley Cusick, adapted for audio cassette by Garrick Hagen. Martha was played by Tony Barry. Connor by Adam Henderson, and Wynn by Laurel Lefko. Blake was played by Michael McGee, Sally by Shelley Thompson, and Greg by Michael Fitzpatrick. Garrick Hagen played Mr. Stevenson, and Elena de Gogol was the voice of the child. The narrator was Jeff Harding. Trick or Treat was directed by Garrick Hagen. The production was recorded by John Mayfield, who also composed the music. Post-production was by Paul Dealey. This has been a Story Circle production for Scholastic Limited. You may like to know that other titles in the series of point horror tapes include Halloween Night, Fun House, The Cemetery, The Witness, Dream Date, and The Accident. <laughs>